Shooting video for this channel requires a ton of batteries and a rather large investment in batteries. I have these heavy duty Sony NPF batteries, slightly more compact Sony NPF batteries. I have a ton of these Canon LP E6NH batteries, a bunch of double A's, triple A's, and the list goes on. But does the Bluetti EB3A power station inside this box solve our problems? Details coming up, but first, I encourage you to subscribe and choose all notifications so you're kept informed on the latest camera news, rumors, and reviews like this. Bluetti just sent me this portable power station, the EB3A, for review. Can it free us up from all these batteries that we have to cart around with us? Does it provide enough power capacity that we can shoot all day remotely without having to worry about range anxiety? Well, I'm going to cover off the specifications, then I'm going to do some detailed testing, before I give you my conclusion on what I think of this product and whether I recommend it over buying, well, dozens of batteries. But first, let's do an unboxing so we can take a look at the device and see what it comes with. The EB3A weighs about 10, 10.1 pounds, and you can feel that weight. It's a rather compact unit, feels very solid, but thankfully, once it's in use, it's going to be on the ground somewhere, so you're not going to have to be carrying it around a whole lot. All the functions, all the capabilities of this device are located on the front here. There's nothing on the side or the back, and on the top, you have a handle. But what's really, really cool about this device is you can charge your phone without having to plug it in. It has a wireless charging output right on the top, right here, so you place your phone down. If it supports wireless charging, you can charge your phone while you're in the field too, so you're not worried about missing any calls. Up next, I'm going to cover off the specifications for the Bluetti EB3A, but before I do, I've got another product to test alongside this. This is the Bluetti 120 watt solar panel that we can use to charge up the unit. But the real question is, will Bluetti, the EB3A, allow you to charge and discharge at the same time, something known as pass-through charging? Well, all that coming up in testing. The Bluetti EB3A power station has 268 watt hours of capacity and supports 2,500 life cycles to 80%. That means you can actually take this out and use it for 2,500 times of full charges before the capacity drops to about 80% of a new unit. That's pretty significant. And it can go from a depleted state to 80% charged in just 30 minutes. So it's really great for when you get those calls and you have to pick up your gear, get out there and shoot immediately. It has a clean, stable, regulated power delivery throughout the entire state of charge. However, it will automatically shut off if the power load exceeds 10 amps. Parasitic drain is the continuous battery drain measured without load. The parasitic drain on the EB3A is somewhere between 1 and 5% per hour. While this parasitic drain is high for a battery of its size, it's due to that larger inverter. So if it's not in use and you're not charging it up, I recommend powering it off for longer life. The EB3A has a large screen that displays the input, the output, and most importantly, the charge status. It also estimates the remaining time left based on the current load, which is helpful for eliminating range anxiety. It has a cigarette lighter port with a voltage of 12 volts and 10 amps and two DC55s. It has a USB-A port that has five volts or up to three amps and a USB-C port delivering up to a maximum of 100 watts. And of course, it provides wireless charging on the top of the unit. But what really excites me is the inverter. Its 600 watt pure sine wave inverter or 1200 watt surge delivers 120 watts of power. That's the same level of power you're getting when you plug anything into your wall at home or the office. That means that pretty well anything you use at home, whether it be camera, whether it be a ninja or a lighting source, you can all plug up to the inverter, this Bluetti EB3A. However, the more power you consume, the more power you pull, well, obviously, the less time you're going to have with the unit. Charging the Bluetti EB3A can be done through AC current, plugging it into your office or your home, the car's DC port, the solar panel, which I'm testing, which is 120 watts, but they also sell a 200 watt version. You can also increase the charging rate as it supports fast dual charging mode up to 430 watts max. That's using both solar and AC. It is Bluetooth and Wi-Fi capable that allows for supplying firmware updates and for controlling the outputs and the charging speed. The Bluetti EB3A retails for $299, but is on sale for $239, and it's not even Black Friday yet. Now, if you want to buy it with a solar panel, the 120-watt version with the EB3A comes for $598, but can be purchased now for $499. 
and the 200 watt solar panel can be purchased with the EB3A for $798, which is currently on sale for $738. And at the end of this video, if you're interested in buying the Bluetti EB3A or the EB3A with the 120 or 200 watt solar panel, I do have links in the description down below. I'm really excited by this product, the Bluetti EB3A portable power station. I'm gonna take it into the Canadian wilderness way up north, and I wanna test it alongside with my Canon EOS R5. I don't expect it's gonna draw a lot of power, but I'm also gonna connect up my Ninja 5 and record 8K over sample 4K and just see how well it performs. I'll also bring along some external lighting and charge some other devices like my iPhone. But I have several questions that I wanna answer during the testing phase. I want to know what kind of range I can get out of this power station. Can I shoot for four hours, eight hours, or can I shoot for an entire day pushing past 16 or even 20 hours? Do I need the solar panel, the 120 watt version that they sent me to test? Do I need the 200 watt or can I shoot for an entire day without requiring a solar panel in any way whatsoever? And what about those fast charging modes? Can I charge this in under an hour from 0% all the way up to 100%? And to push the Blue Eddy power station, the EB3A further, I'm up here in the remote Canadian wilderness. The current temperature is five degrees Celsius or about 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Before heading up north, let's go over the three testing scenarios I came up with to properly test Bluetti's claims about the EB3A power stations, charging and discharging capabilities. In the first test, I thought what better way to test out this unit than in a real life scenario where I'm shooting for this channel, where I've been shooting for the past couple of years. So everything that is currently plugged into the mains, the main key light, the fill light, the Canon EOS R5, the Ninja 5 external recorder, and this Godox light above me, I plugged it into the Blue Eddy. And then of course, after that was fully depleted, I thought, well, what better way to test it than in the second scenario to test the recharging capabilities? How fast could I recharge the Blue Eddy with just alternating current, so plugged into the wall? And how much faster could I charge it if I hooked up a solar panel? And then by hooking up the optional 120 watt solar panel, how much could I greatly extend my record time, if any at all? Let's get to the testing. Most of the videos I shoot for this channel are shot in this very studio, and I have everything coming down into two power bars. The first power bar terminates into the second power bar, and really I only need one, but because of some of the adapters are so big, I have to use two power bars. All I had to do to switch over to the power station was disconnect the power bar from the wall and plug it into the Blue Eddy EB3A's inverter at the bottom right of the unit. So all the devices in the studio that are currently drawing power include the Canon EOS R5, outputting 8K over sample 4K over HDMI to the Ninja 5 external recorder in Apple ProRes. I'm using an 85 watt key light running at 60% and the fill light is running at, at about a third of that power level. And then of course I have a Godox ceiling mounted light that's running at 25%. As I power everything up, you can see that the load increases and the shooting time decreases. With everything turned on and recording, I'm drawing between 108 and 112 watts. The power station says I have about 2.3 hours left, which means two hours and 18 minutes. This was a terrific test. This is the longest I've actually shot in the studio using the Canon EOS R5 with the Ninja 5 and without having to stop and start recording without any overheating from anything, I was able to record for a solid two hours and 47 minutes. I did, however, stop the Blue Eddy when we got down to 1% because I want to power everything off properly. Two hours and 47 minutes. That's 21% higher than the estimate at the start of the test where the Bluetti EB3A said we were only gonna get about two hours and 18 minutes. That's pretty impressive. And speaking of overheating, when I touched the EB3A power station after fully depleting, well, down to 1%, it wasn't even hot to the touch. I would say it was no hotter than a lukewarm handshake at best. After fully depleting the Bluetti EB3A power station in the last test, I now want to see how quickly I could charge it up for the next test or the next job. So I tested a couple of scenarios. I tested turbo and standard mode, and I also wanted to see how quickly I could recharge just charging from the wall and also charging outside from the wall and using an external solar panel, the 120 watt EB3A power station, or sorry, the solar panel from the power station. So in the first test, I was really eager to test the solar panel. I hooked it up immediately to the power station without connecting it to the wall, and I was only drawing about 25 to 45 watts, and that because the solar panel was flat on the ground. To get the maximum output from the solar panel, you really wanna have it angled towards the sun and you don't want any tree branches in the way. When I walked in front of it, walked in front of the solar panel, the amount of output that I got actually cut in half. So make sure you've got the solar panel in a way where people aren't gonna be walking in front of it, where you're not gonna have tree branches or any wild grizzly bears. 
With a solar panel outputting at a sustained 90 to 92 watts, the EB3A power station said that it was going to take about 3.1 hours to fully charge the unit up. After depleting the unit once again, I hooked it up to the wall, and this time it showed that it was getting 260 to 270 watts, although at once it did peak at around 290, and the unit said it was going to charge in 54 minutes, which it did. It was right around 50 to 54 minutes, and that's pretty good for considering that I got three hours out of it the last time, but it took just under an hour to fully charge up. But the real test, I wanted to test with both the solar panel and pulling power from the wall to see how fast this unit could charge up. So with the solar panel hooked up, I didn't see any difference at all. Yeah, I know, surprising, right? I wondered, okay, I, I probably haven't read something or I've missed something. What could be wrong? Why am I not getting any further decrease in the amount of time to charge? And why am I not seeing more wattage here? The simple reason was, is that I was in standard mode and using the smartphone app, and this is really critical. I highly recommend downloading the smartphone app to have full control over the unit because these options aren't available on the front of the unit. So I had to switch to turbo mode. So when you've got the solar panel and you're pulling power from the wall, you're charging the unit, you need to have it in turbo mode. And doing this, you are presented with a warning saying, hey, you're going to reduce the lifespan of this unit if you do this. But for those times where you need to charge it up really quickly, I was able to get it to charge in well under an hour, and that was producing 430 watts. So with the solar panel hooked up and pulling power from the wall, it was able to charge with 430 watts, and that was pretty impressive. I was really impressed to see what this device was able to do. Um, to be able to charge up that quickly and to be able to provide that much power um, is pretty significant. However, there is one caution that I need to mention here. My testing results might differ greatly from yours, especially if you live near the tropics. I live north of 44 degrees, and what that means is, even though this was a 120 watt device, I was only getting about 90, 92, and at once I saw 93 watts. And that isn't necessarily a testament to the quality of this product, the 120 watt solar panel, but more or less because at this time of year in November, I'm not getting sun very directly. In fact, the sun is sort of way off at an angle like this, and um, that's what happens when you live up north. So the, the sun wasn't very strong to still be able to pull around 92 to 93 watts. And to be able to charge up this unit fully in three hours was a pretty good testament. But the real test of the solar panel, the Blue Eddy 120 watt solar panel, is in the third and final test scenario. Now I'm finally in the great Canadian wilderness, way up north, north of 45 degrees of latitude. And I've got the Canon EOS R5, a tripod, and the Ninja 5 external recorder. I'm still recording at 8K over sample 4K or 4K HQ. It's outputting from the Canon EOS R5 in the Ninja 5, and that's giving me Apple ProRes 422. And because the sun was high in the sky, and I couldn't find anybody to help me cart my gear around, I decided to shoot without light. So just the Ninja 5 drawing power and the external recorder. Again, I was recording, I wasn't just on standby mode, and the EB3A, it said I had 6.3 hours of record time left. Testing the Blue Eddy EB3A power station with a solar panel was one of the first things I wanted to do. I wanted to see if I could test it in the remote wilderness. I wanted to see if I could test it without using any other external power supply and to see if it could power it indefinitely as long as the sun was there. So I was super excited to do this test. With the sun high in the sky, I plugged in the Blue Eddy 120 watt solar panel and I saw something surprising. Instead of seeing my shooting time increase or the amount of time that this unit could put out power, it actually went into charging mode and showed me how long it would take to charge it. But after getting up to 99%, it then showed I had 30 hours left. But once you see 30 hours, it basically says, look, I can just shoot indefinitely as long as nothing changes. So as long as the output doesn't change or the input doesn't change, or as long as the input is larger than the output, it can keep charging indefinitely. So I kept charging for hours and hours and hours. And then as the sun started to weaken, as it started to dip below the trees, you could see that the wattage from the unit or from the solar panel wasn't strong enough to match the draw, so we started pulling down on the battery. By the time I was finished filming, by the time the sun was starting to set, I was exhausted and I packed things up and I basically had a unit that was almost fully charged, ready to go the next day. I highly recommend purchasing the Blue Eddy EB3A power station because it's absolutely incredible. But the 120 watt solar panel, well, that depends on what scenario you're planning on shooting in. The first scenario I tested was in the studio where I have a key light, a fill light, the Canon EOS R5 with a Ninja 5 external recorder, and of course, an overhead light. And with that, I was able to get just under three hours running the unit down to 1%. That's pretty impressive. And if you're shooting in those types of scenarios, you want, to back, you want backup power, 
Or if you want something that you can take up to the cottage and charge your phone and all those wonderful things, well, in that case, all you need is the Bluetti EB3A power station. And currently it's on sale for $239. There's also going to be another sale going on around November the 11th and a Black Friday sale. So keep an eye out for this unit. I think at $239 or even its regular price of $299 is an absolute bargain. But what truly impressed me was how long I could shoot with the Canon R5 and the Ninja 5 externally. Again, I wasn't using any lights, but with the solar panel, just the 120 watt, not the 200 watt, I was able to charge indefinitely. And then when the sun started to reduce in power because it was moving behind tree branches, it was starting to set, it was going behind clouds. Well, then I still had about another six, seven or eight hours left. It was pretty impressive how much time I could shoot with on this unit. And of course, if you added a key light, well, then that would obviously draw a little bit more power. However, there are a few caveats about the solar panel. It's not the most efficient unit out there. So if it's not a full sun day, you're not going to get the charging times. You're not going to get an awful lot of power from the unit. You might as well just leave it in the house or in your office. But if it's sunny and it doesn't matter if you're up north like I am, north of 44 degrees, you can still get a good 80 percent, 70 percent of the charge. And I was able to charge at above 93 watts. And because the unit can charge itself and discharge at the same time, I was able to power off with the Canon R5 and the Ninja 5 indefinitely. And that was truly impressive. I was really impressed with the solar panel. If you are planning on doing some heavy duty shooting, you're going to be shooting with lights and you're going to be outside disconnected away from the grid. I highly recommend getting the 200 watt solar panel. But for the shooting I was doing with my studio and being outside, I really didn't see the need for the 120 watt solar panel. Uh, but really an incredible unit. Uh, one of the most exciting products I review, I've reviewed in a long time. So if you're really interested in this, I highly recommend purchasing it. Use my links down below. Like I said, there's a bunch of sales on right now, so you can get it really cheap. Uh, the last sale that I saw was $239 just before I published this. They told me that another sale is going on November the 11th and a Black Friday sale. I'm sorry, I almost forgot. After doing the last scenario, after doing the last testing scenario out in the Canadian wilderness, I brought it back home, fully charged it up, then powered it off, and I let it sit for three whole days. And when I powered it back on this morning, before recording this to get some more B-roll, it was still at 100%. It hadn't dropped at all. So once it's powered off, after you've charged it up, uh, you're, you're good for several days at least. I highly recommend charging the unit up the night before. You don't want to do things in the morning because you might forget things. But yeah, I'm pretty impressed with the unit. So right now on sale for $239 for the unit itself. I think it's $499 for the 120 watt power station and $738 for the power station and the 200 watt solar panel. So I highly recommend purchasing the Blue Eddy EB3A power station and getting the solar panel if you're going to be shooting out in the wild for extended periods of time. But that's it for now. If you want to stay up to date on my latest camera news and rumors or my latest reviews, go ahead and click that subscribe button, but make sure you also choose all notifications. By choosing all notifications, as soon as I publish a new video like this one here, you'll get notified by YouTube. So that way you can stay up to date on the latest camera news and rumors. And that saves you from scrubbing all the Twitter feeds, RSS feeds, all your favorite websites and YouTube channels. Because when you're in a rush, I cover all the major camera news, rumors, and I do reviews on all the major camera brands and models. So thank you so much for watching. We'll see you again soon.